Hey friends, and welcome to today's Tuesday Travel Vlog, where every Tuesday I post a new video about the fun things that I've done and the cool places I've been as I travel cross country in my RV. Today's Tuesday Travel Vlog comes to you from the Houston Space Center. A little too windy and noisy in the parking lot to continue filming this outside so I've moved inside to my RV so we can have a better little chat. This complex originally contained the manned spacecraft center that opened up in the 60s. The first space adventure monitored from here was one of the Gemini missions. It wasn't later called the Johnson Space Center until after the late Lyndon B. Johnson former president. Today, the complex contains the astronaut training facility, Mission Control, Johnson Space Center, as well as this fantastic space museum. One of the first exhibits I went into was our first space station known as Skylab. Skylab was set up as a scientific uh, space exploration area and you can walk through it. You can walk through and see uh, where the crew would eat, where they would exercise and sleep, where they would go to the bathroom. It is neat to really be able to walk through this first scientific Skylab. One of the other more popular interactive exhibits is they have a gigantic Boeing with the space shuttle sitting on top of it. Walk all the way up the top to the gantry and that brings you to where you can enter into the flight deck. So you can see the flight controls. It looks out over the cargo bay, which you can also enter into. And similar to the Skylab, it takes you into the crew quarters. In the crew quarters, you can see their lockers and of course, where they go to the bathroom. I don't know what it is about going to the bathroom in space, but that seems to fascinate a lot of people. As you leave the space shuttle, you work your way down into the Boeing aircraft itself. Now this Boeing aircraft was originally privately owned, so it did have a first class lounge on the second floor. It's currently closed off and you can't get up there, but that's also where a lot of the pilot controls are. But you can walk through this airplane. It shows you how they stripped it out uh, to give it less weight so that they can carry the space shuttle. It does show you where they had some working stations and it's got a lot of fascinating exhibits that talk about, all about the space shuttle, the Boeing, um, how this even came about. So lots of fun to be able to walk through this. Right next to it in the same area is one of the gantries. Now the gantry is like a rite of passage that astronauts take to walk down to get to the space shuttle. And if you're so inclined, you can walk at slow motion just like they do in the movies. Other exhibits, uh, of course, include the original Apollo missions and our trips to the moon. You can even touch a moon rock. There's a great exhibit on the International Space Station. But some of the more exciting stuff is what NASA has in store for the future. We are going back to the moon. Why, right? So number one question, why are we going back to the moon? We've already been there. Well, yeah, we were there, but hey, it was kind of a long time ago. Our technology is better. Our knowledge is better. So we're going back to the moon to be able to apply everything that we've learned since then. Not only that, but where we are going is different. This diagram shows the different areas that the Apollo missions landed. The new mission called Artemis, is going to go to the South Pole of the Moon. Not only that, but the Artemis missions is breaking barriers. It's going to have the first female astronaut to go to the Moon and the first person of color. So this is exciting for NASA. 
Beyond the moon is the mission to Mars. So there's only ever been rovers on Mars and NASA really wants to put people up there. We know that Mars has some water, so they want to explore the planet, explore the life. They want to try to grow things up there, see if it's habitable. Um, basically in the words of The Martian, which is a book by Andy Weir, they want to science the out of that planet. Also a lot of fun things for the kids, a lot of hands-on exhibits, fun and games, uh, including the ability to make your own mission badge, which of course I did. So I'm going to call this Mission Stacy. As you can see, I've turned my A into a rocket ship. And I'm going to pass this along to NASA and see if I can get my mission badge on one of those upcoming missions to Mars. The most popular attraction here are the tram tours. Now, there are three tours. They fill up quickly. When I first got to the center, I went up to customer service and I was like, yep, I want to be on one of these tours. They were like, come back at 1 o'clock. That's when we're going to start taking reservations for the afternoon tours. Okay, no problem. I come back about... I don't know, 1245-ish, the line is around the entire lobby. So to make a very long story short, I did not get on a tram tour. I know, bummer. I would really have liked to have been on one of those, at least maybe out to Mission Control or the Astronaut Training Center. Uh, so my advice is get there early, book the tours early. You cannot book them the day ahead of time. You must book them that day. Uh, so make sure you get there early so you can book your tram tours. Uh, I highly recommend if anything to do with the space program interests you uh, to come here and to check this place out. So thanks a lot for traveling along with me. I always appreciate having you on the road. Be sure to check out all my other videos and I will see you next Tuesday.